In this video, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of stuff I wish I knew as a beginner in Final Cut Pro. There are a whole bunch of free sound effects for Final Cut Pro all found inside of Final Cut Pro. All you need to do is go up to Final Cut Pro and then select download additional content. That was easy. If you haven't downloaded it already, it'll take you through the steps needed to go ahead and install those free sound effects. The second thing I wish I knew as a beginner in Final Cut Pro is that you can bring down just a video element or just an audio element from your browser into your timeline. What I used to do is take my video element and drop it down and then I would have to lower the volume on each and every clip I got down here. But instead, all you need to do is come down to these little icons, click on this down arrow and then select video only. You can also achieve that with shift two. Then from there, I can just click and drag this video element down to my tutorial. And just like that, you'll notice that it no longer has any audio elements. You could also do the same thing. Click on this down arrow, select audio only or shift three, and we could bring down the audio just from this video clip onto my timeline. And just like that, you'll see that there is no video attached. The third thing I wish I knew as a beginner in Final Cut Pro is that there are two different ways to organize your media in your browser. As you can see, all of my footage and media is kind of put together in one space, but if we right click, you'll notice that you have group clips by as well as sort by. If we select group clips by, we could go over to content created, and now this will throw each of these clips into a group, which we can expand or collapse as needed with each of these groups. But you'll also notice that if we right click, we can go to sort by. And if we want to sort the media, we could change it over to something like name, so it's all alphabetically ordered. We could sort it by duration, all sorts of options to make sure that your media is lined up inside of your browser in a way that makes sense. Usually a problem people have is that all their media is not lined up in the way that they would expect it. And that's generally because of one of these two options. Either they grouped it and they need to set it over to something like none, or they are sorting it by something like duration instead of by name. So just make sure you check that out if your media isn't lined up inside of your browser in the way that you would expect. The fourth thing I wish I knew as a beginner in Final Cut Pro is that you can set up to do markers. If I go ahead and scroll through my timeline, I can find a spot that I want to mark. Push M on my keyboard, that will create this little blue marker. I could push M again and that will bring up this dialogue menu. You could also get that by double clicking on the marker or right clicking on it and then selecting modify. You'll see I have three options up here at the top. We have our regular marker, which is a great visual indicator, but we can also change it over to a to do marker. Now I could write in something like color grade or maybe even add in graphics. Then you can push done. You'll notice that my marker is now this orange color instead of this blue color of the standard marker. Once I've completed that marker, double click on it and mark it as completed. And now that will give me this beautiful green marker. This can be a very fast way to visually indicate all of the stuff you completed in your timeline and all of the stuff that you eventually need to get to. Should also be noted, a really quick way to jump between markers is to go on over into your index and go down to tags. In here, you will see all of the markers that you've added on your timeline. And you can just click on them to quickly jump through and find all of them inside of your timeline. The fifth thing I wish I knew about in Final Cut Pro as a beginner is that you can copy and paste effects from one clip onto another. There's also two different ways to do this inside of Final Cut Pro, and I happen to believe that one of these is better than the other. Let's say for this particular shot, I want to add in a nice bad TV effect and maybe a Gaussian blur just to really spice things up in my video. Now that I have my effects applied, I want to apply them onto another clip in the timeline. Go ahead and push Command C to to copy it and then find that secondary clip that you want to paste it to. Then from there you can go up to edit and you can select paste effects or option command V. However, you'll notice that it doesn't ask me which effects I want to apply. And this particular shot actually happened to have a transformative zoom on the shot, which it has removed. The reason for this is because we chose to paste effects. And if you ask me, it's much better to instead paste attributes. And I'll show you why. Selecting the shot, we can go up to edit and go down to paste attributes which you can also achieve with command shift V. Then from there, it will give you this dialog window. In this dialog window, we can select exactly what we want to paste across. So if we don't want to affect the transform position, we can go ahead and leave that disabled. 
You can also disable something like the bad TV effect. Maybe we only want the Gaussian blur. We also don't want the volume to be adjusted. So once you've made all of those changes, I can push paste and now it's going to only paste that singular effect onto the clip. This is essential, especially if you're working with retimed clips or you have transformations applied onto different clips. Rather than using paste effects, I strongly recommend that you instead use paste attributes. The sixth thing I wish I knew as a beginner in Final Cut Pro is that there is a way to see a duplicated range of a clip. What I mean by that is maybe you look at your timeline and you're not quite sure if any of the clips in your timeline are a duplicate from an earlier section. An easy way to be able to tell that is to click on this film strip icon and make sure duplicate ranges is enabled. I'll leave it enabled here and show you how you can tell when a clip is duplicated. I'm going to go ahead and push option, click and drag to duplicate this specific clip. And you'll notice at the top of that clip, it has added these zebra stripes. This is going to indicate if that particular range of the clip is duplicated somewhere else in the timeline. You'll also notice, let's say I delete this middle portion, that this middle portion here does not have those zebra stripes. So it only indicates the exact portions of video that already show up previously in your video. And tip number seven goes in tandem with tip number six, and that is there is a very easy way to see only clips in your browser that you have not yet used. Right now I have a whole bunch of clips that I want to use in this kind of mini reel that I've created here. All I need to do is go to the very top and click on this button that says all clips and change it over to unused. You can also achieve that with control U. Now if I scroll through, I know that the media that is inside of this browser is only going to show up if it has not been previously used on the timeline. If there's a specific clip where I used the middle portion of it, it would actually create two versions of that exact same clip. So you'll see in this shot that I did not use the media up until this point, then it jumps to a second cut on that exact same shot. So this can be a very useful way at making sure you are only using unused media. This is extremely handy for gaming videos, for reels, for documentaries, all sorts of different circumstances. The eighth tip helps a ton in organizing your timeline. In this example, you'll see that I have this film mat all the way across my video, but it's lined up on top of different clips and underneath other clips, and I want them to all be in one clean timeline. All I need to do is push Command G, which will group them. That will place them in this secondary storyline, which I can now click and drag and move around as a single object. This is super helpful, and I absolutely love using groups because not only can I move this group around, but it also retains all of the magnetic timeline properties that we find in our main timeline. If I want to, I could click and drag this film mat over to the right hand side and now all of the clips are going to move accordingly just like they would in the regular magnetic timeline. However, if you find that you don't like having this secondary storyline, all you need to do is select your clips right click on it and then select lift from storyline and that will break it apart outside of the group. It should be noted that if you apply a transition onto a clip that's outside of the primary magnetic timeline, that is going to place it inside of a secondary storyline or inside of a group. Tip number nine is that there is an automatic way to slow down your footage to the proper frame rate. So for example, if I filmed footage at 60 frames per second, I would need to slow it down to 40% for my timeline. However, if I select a specific clip and push Command R, then we click on this little down arrow, you can see that we can only slow it down to 50%. So the best way to get the most optimal speed out of your clips is to select all of your clips that you want to slow down, click on this speedometer icon, and then select automatic speed. You'll notice now that that has slowed down all of these clips to their proper 40% speed, and I didn't have to do any of the math. And as a quick tip, if you need to get your clip back to normal speed, you can just push shift N. And finally, tip number 10 is the secret sauce to get the ultimate slow-mo on Final Cut Pro. Let's say with this particular shot, 40% is still not slow enough, so I want to slow it even further and we'll go all the way down to 4%. If I push play, you'll notice that the motion is very choppy. That is because there is not any sort of interpolation where it's creating frames between frames to make it look smooth. All you need to do is again click on this little speedometer, go down to video quality, and then select optical flow. 
Final Cut Pro is going to analyze that specific clip and it's going to generate new frames based on the previous frames that were there to make it look as smooth as possible. Now I have pushed this clip to the absolute maximum. I strongly recommend that you don't normally But if you ever need to, you can try out this optical flow method. Let's go ahead and take a look at how much smoother this is compared to the old footage where it was really, really choppy because of the particular frame rate we were working with. So that was a whole bunch of stuff that I wish I knew as a beginner inside of Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.